Wizards of the Coast Chief Chris Cox is now the president of Hasbro. What it means for D&D, today on Dungeon Craft. Death bring her here. Subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any cool content. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master. And I'm Deathbringer. Level up your game by subscribing and get my t-shirt below. From the Wall Street Journal, Hasbro taps Wizards of the Coast Division Chief Chris Cox as CEO. Hasbro is named Chris Cox its chief executive, elevating the head of the toy company's Wizards of the Coast and Digital Gaming Division to fill the top job following the death of CEO Brian Goldner in October. Mr. Cox, 48, is a former Microsoft executive who joined Hasbro in 2016 to head up the division best known for Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and & Dragons. As president and operating chief, he pushed the unit into more digital gaming, helping it to double revenue during his tenure to over $1 billion in 2021. Though a relative newcomer based in Renton, Washington, Mr. Cox will look to continue the blueprint at Pawtucket, Rhode Island-based Hasbro established under Mr. Goldner. The strategy focuses on developing strong storylines across the company's brands, which in turn drive sales of toys, games, and other merchandise. Hasbro plans to name a new head for Wizards of the Coast in the coming weeks. The message here is very clear. Hasbro thinks Chris Cox has done a great job, and he has. D&D is now mainstream entertainment. It's featured on Stranger Things and Big Bang Theory. They're making a big-budget D&D movie with Chris Pine. It's the topic of the largest streaming show ever, Critical Role, attracting legions of new fans. Marketing has shifted. Wizards used to go to Gen Con and Origins to market their games toward, well gamers, but they don't anymore because they don't need to. They've got dedicated shelf space in every target right next to Hasbro's other classic, Monopoly. Critical Role streaming and online play has attracted more buyers than conventions ever did. D&D is evolving into a lifestyle brand, much like Harley Davidson. Harley Davidson doesn't just sell motorcycles, they sell a lifestyle, a culture. And there are people that buy Harley t-shirts and baby jumpers that have never ridden a Harley motorcycle. 5E lead designer Mike Merle said as much five years ago in a panel discussion about 5th edition, link and time stamp below. D&D is a culture. You buy a Harley and you buy into the idea of Harley as a culture. You think to yourself, I'm a Harley rider. That's who I am. Just like Harley is synonymous with biker culture and coolness and individualism, Hasbro wants D&D to be associated with nerd culture, which has become cool. There are people wearing D&D t-shirts who have never played the game. There are people who watch Critical Role but don't actually play. There are people who buy the books just to roll up characters. Wizards of the Coast data shows most D&D campaigns only last six sessions or until the characters have reached seventh level. That means many, if not most, of D&D's fan base are casual players and Hasbro wants them to be part of the D&D community as well. That's why you hear that phrase, the D&D community, so much in press releases and publicity from Hasbro. Now, how will this affect D&D in the future? Well, you can expect more crossovers like these D&D My Little Pony action figures, and is a Peppa Pig Artificer plush doll far behind? Probably not. Like Monopoly, I expect D&D will get a facelift every five years or so, so you can expect more additions with largely superficial changes, tweaks in the lore that make it more acceptable to mainstream audiences, and fixes for broken spells. Healing spirit and Goodberry, I am looking at you. And like Monopoly, I think the mechanics of D&D have ceased evolving. Future editions will appear more like 5th edition, than 4th or 3rd edition ever did. And just like Monopoly replaced the classic iron with the cat, don't be surprised if tabaxi are elevated to a major race in the player's handbook. It strikes me that animals are a recurring theme in Hasbro products, like in the new Monopoly community chess cards, you can volunteer at the animal shelter. Every new D&D &D book introduces a new pet or playable species, owl people, turtle people, rabbit people, and the reason is children love animals. They love superheroes too, and that's why D&D characters are much more powerful and level up more quickly. Harry Potter is very influential as well. It's clear Strixhaven is Hogwarts down to a similar Quidditch-style team sport. It's obvious that 5e products are designed to appeal 
to a much younger audience. That's why death saves are a thing. In earlier editions of the game, characters frequently died at first level, but that's discouraging for children. If they have a negative impression of the game the first time they play it, they're unlikely to return. But if their character not only survives, but levels up, they're more likely to purchase the player's handbook, Xanathar's Guide, Tasha's Cauldron, and so on. And when the new edition of D&D comes out, they're more likely to buy it in the same way an iPhone customer will upgrade to the next iPhone, or a Harley customer will trade in their Harley for a new Harley. Chris Cox isn't going to change a whole lot. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If anything, Hasbro, from an economic point of view, should just keep doing what they're doing. The game is more accessible than ever, the fan base is growing, and more fans is always a good thing. From a business point of view, I don't see how you could improve on this model. Mr. Cox has taken D&D to heights I never thought possible, and I predict he's going to stick with what has proven to be a winning formula. But one thing you won't see him do is sell the D&D IP. He knows it's the goose that lays golden eggs, and he is not going to sell it now. At least that's what I think. What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Also below, you'll find links to Dungeon Craft on Facebook and Patreon, where you can get Deathbringer, My House Rules, and links to my modules Macdeath and Frankenstein, available at questgivers.com. And if you love old-school, deadly D&D, check out this video on why the classic Moldvay rules are so great. May all your rolls be 20s. So, Deathbringer, are you looking forward to a D&D Peppa the Pig crossover? I'm one step ahead of you. Peppa's already roasting in the fireplace. Because the only thing that can make D&D better is... Bacon. Now, get my t-shirt and watch more Dungeon Craft.